Of all the primitive types in Game Maker, the triangle types are honestly probably the least interesting. But it's apparently my life's mission to cover every facet of what you can do in this engine, so we're gonna go over these today. Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome to the, uh, the last three primitive types that you can use when you're drawing stuff in Game Maker that I like to talk about, or at least that I have yet to talk about. And those are going to be the triangle strip, the triangle list, and the triangle fan. So if you're familiar with any type of primitive shape, in computer graphics, you're probably familiar with the triangle list. It is by far the most common, and it's pretty easy to understand. If you have uh, three sets of points, three vertices, uh, vertices 1, 2, and 3, you just simply draw a triangle between vertices 1, 2, and 3. After that, if you have, three, say, three more vertices, 4, 5, and 6, you just draw another triangle between vertices 4, 5, and 6. You, uh, you go from there. You don't do anything fancy or complicated with connecting these. And if you've done anything with vertex buffers or primitive types or used any of the weird advanced drawing features of Game Maker, you probably dealt with triangle strips. And if we're being realistic in Game Maker, that's fine. There's all kinds of other types of games that you can make in this engine perfectly fine without even having to know what the other triangle primitive types do. So let's talk about triangle strips first. Hey. And I guess I'll show it again. Um, if you have six vertices, one, two, three, four, five, and six like this, uh, you can connect them in various ways to, uh, to draw triangles. These are disconnected triangles. They don't share any common vertices between them. Uh, if you were to instead draw these six vertices connected as a triangle strip, you're going to have something that looks a little bit weirder. So you have six vertices, and the triangle strip is going to run down the list of vertices, but instead of having uh, vertices 1, 2, 3, and then 4, 5, 6, and then 7, 8, 9 being their own separate triangles, the triangle strip is first going to draw uh, vertices 1, 2, 3 connected as a single triangle, and then it is going to draw vertices 2, 3, and 4 connected as a single triangle, then uh, vertices 3, 4, and 5, which in this case isn't really going to show up because uh, 3, 4, and 5 are on a line, and that triangle has zero area, and it's not actually going to fill any pixels. And lastly, it is going to fill uh, vertices 4, 5, and 6 as a single triangle. And this configuration of vertices isn't the most helpful um, illustration of what you could actually use this for. The main selling point of the triangle strip and the triangle fan is that you could use the same number of vertices to draw more triangles than you could with simply a triangle list. I'll have on screen an example of a configuration of vertices where a triangle um, triangle strip actually would like look like something that you would actually have in a game. Never mind that now. Next, let's move on to the triangle fan. And this example is going to look even weirder. Triangle fans are, believe it or not, a little bit more used, I think, in the modern day than triangle strips, but maybe not for the reasons that you're thinking. And if you think about the general shape of a fan, you can probably guess how the triangle fan is going to connect vertices. So first we're going to connect vertices 1, 2, and 3 to form a single triangle. Then instead of connecting triangles 2, 3, and 4 to form the next triangle, we're going to be uh, using triangles 1, 3, and 4 to connect the next triangle. And then 1, 4, and 5, and then 1, 5, and 6. And these vertices are going to be connected in a fan shape, or at least something that would be a fan shape if they weren't like being drawn all on top of each other in this example. Uh, again, not the best example of something that you might use a triangle fan for. And two of the triangles, uh, again, have zero surface area, so they wouldn't even be shown anyway, even if the last one wasn't drawn over half of them. And the reason that you might do this is, again, so that you can get more triangles out of the same number of vertices. So I actually uh, can think of a use or two for triangle fans in, uh, in games. If you want to do something such as draw a um, a pentagon or a hexagon or some other geometric shape like that, and you want it to, uh, let me see, I can, and I'll have uh, all of this code in the project when I throw it on GitHub after this video. If you like math, you could say you were trying to draw a regular n-gon, or I guess even an irregular one. Um, a triangle fan would make your life a little bit easier, so if you were to say 4 of our i equals 0, i is less than 360, i plus equals 60, You could, for example, for every uh, vertex in the, in 
the polygon that you're trying to draw in the hexagon or whatever, uh, you could have a, an individual triangle defined by three points with a vertex position, vertex texture coordinate, vertex color. And if I were to run the game now, and are we submitting with a triangle fan? We are. If I were to run the game now, all right, that's actually off the screen a little bit. You would have here a hexagon, and that's fine. Um, however, it might make your life a little bit easier to instead. So if you were trying to draw, for example, a regular hexagon, you could have for each edge of the hexagon uh, an individual triangle comprising of that edge and the two vertices of that edge to the center. And if I were to draw this with a triangle, uh, not a triangle fan, but a triangle um, list, uh, you would have a regular hexagon, right? Like this, that's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with this hexagon. It's a mathematically correct he hexagon. It has uh, six sides as hexagons are supposed to. But if you wanted to use instead a triangle fan, you could, um, instead of having a separate triangle for each, uh, each edge of the hexagon, you could have simply a starting vertex and a single vertex for each, um, each corner of the hexagon. If you were to uh, set this to a triangle fan, then you would have, and I need one more, this needs to be less than or equal to 360 over there. Um, you would have the same, the same regular hexagon, but instead of having to do all that, like defining an extra triangle inside each iteration of the for loop, you could just define a single vertex and you could, um, you could have the starting vertex be, um, well, the center point. And you can even make this a little bit fancier if you want it to be something a little bit more to look at. Make color HSV, and uh, we can say the hue is going to be I divided by 360 times 255 because the make color HSV function in GameMaker is weird. Um, saturation 255, value 255, and we now have a, a rainbow colored hexagon. That's somewhat visually appealing. Um, if you wanted to have a higher resolution, uh, you could have a dodecagon, a regular dodecagon. All right, I guess we're doing some sort of a like color rib, color wheel business over here. Um, if you want to go even higher resolution, what would this be? A twenty four gon. But anyway, that is your uh, that's your regular twenty four gon. So that's a fun thing that you can do with uh, with triangle fans, and I think I'll leave that as the uh, as the uh, like the demo code because it looks kind of nice. Now there's an elephant in the room here, and that is that whenever I say the word performance in a video, funny things start to happen and people start to get some funny ideas. If you're trying to build a game for a device that's more powerful than approximately a Sony PlayStation 2, then this is going to have no difference whatsoever in the performance of your actual game maker game. All the usual performance caveats apply here. Almost all game maker games are CPU bound, unless you're doing something truly and unbelievably weird in this engine, and shaving off a few vertices here and there when you um, submit a, a primitive type really isn't going to make a difference in how fast your game runs. If you're trying to somehow make your game run on something like a Nintendo DS, which somewhat famously has a uh, hard upper limit of 6,144 vertices per uh, frame, then yeah, shaving off a few vertices here and there is something you might actually want to do. And in fact, uh, using things like triangle lists was a way that um, developers of games on the Nintendo DS did squeeze a little bit more visual performance out of their games. But even a very cheap laptop from five years ago is orders of magnitude more powerful than a Nintendo DS. And the main reason that I'm making this video is because I think it's interesting. And because sometimes uh, when you're drawing specific uh, geometric endgons, uh, triangle fans can just make your code a little bit neater. And the fact that 20 years ago developers would use triangle strips and triangle fans to squeeze a little bit more performance out of their games is a little bit more of a historical fun fact than actual uh, game dev advice. And I'm probably going to include that bit in every single video in which I mention the word performance until people actually, like, stop getting hung up on that stuff. Anyway, hey. that's it. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, if you want the, uh, particularly the code that you probably want is the code for drawing a regular end gun over here. If you just like don't feel like typing this out manually or whatever, uh, I will have a link to this project in a GitHub repository down in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, 
uh, one tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a game. I hope you all found this interesting and I will see you all later. By the way, remember how I mentioned that triangle fans are used in games in places that you might not necessarily expect? Polygon faces and OBJs are triangle fans. And most of the time, those polygons are only going to be a triangle or a quad anyway, so a triangle with three points or a quad with four points. But it's entirely possible for a face in an OBJ file to have more than four vertices. If a face in an OBJ only has three vertices, then it's a triangle anyway, because the triangle fan would connect the three vertices just to be a single triangle. But if it has four or more vertices, then it would be connected with a triangle fan. So you would have vertices one, two, and three, and then vertices one, three, and four, and then... It's not very often that I see uh, faces in an OBJ with more than four vertices, but... Well, anyway, faces in an OBJ are connected as a triangle fan. So that's kind of fun. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, and Zenzerman for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.